<laughs> Whoa! Hey! <laughs> wow, that's... Hey! I haven't seen you in a long time. Wow, that's cool. Didn't even know you existed still. Anyway, uh, I've been busy, you know, uh, making small miniatures of myself. Uh, not using a 3D printer. Um, so yeah, uh, busy life, you might say. Uh, but okay, uh, this, uh, this is interesting that you came in just now, because this game here, it's... Well, look, just look at it, you know, all, all these awesome components. It has to represent some something great, right? So this is called "There Grew a Kingdom." Uh, it's a, it's a very pretty game, <laughs> absolutely. But okay, what is it? What is it at all? Uh, it's uh, good that you're here. Let's just uh, go over the game, and uh, I'll tell you what it is. Because yeah, th this just begs to be presented to someone. Just look at it. Come on, 3D components. Great uh, indented boards, uh, locking mechanism to hold the board together. Ah, just... Ah, it's so pretty. Ah. There grew a kingdom, indeed. Well, I'm not going to bore you with all the details in this game. Uh, the designers themselves have made a video on how to play it, so I guess you could check that out on There Grew a Kingdom How to Play. Just YouTube it or Google it or whatever. Uh, but here... Um, I'm just going to review the game without actually going into the details because there are a bit, a few details that I'm not totally sure on yet, 100%, because the rulebook has been a victim of, uh, well, lost in translation or something. Uh, they have come with an updated rules for English, which have really just blown my mind. Oh, that's how you're supposed to play it. But still, because of this, I won't go into the details, also it will take too long. But, The Agro Kingdom is a strategy game where you can have up to five players battling it together over this hexagonal board that's uh, tiled randomly, or you could uh, set, up, set it up uh, as uh, recommended by the rules. But that is up to you. But uh, at least they have the lock mechanism here to keep the board in place, so that they won't slide around like they do in Catan or some other games with tiles. So this is a great system, although you always get the same shape on the board. But that is not necessarily a bad thing. At least there is a random or different layout from time to time. What we do in this game is to expand your kingdom and exploit the resources and exterminate the opponent and explore. Well, there's not, not much exploring here. Uh, everything is explored already. You just have to uh, branch out and build new cities and take over other cities. Uh, and that is not a new concept, but this game does provide a unique feel to it, as well as unique uh, actions you can do and a very unique combat system, which we'll get back to later. You can see the red player here, represented by this very cool lion head figure. They all have their own ident uh, unique figurehead. This is a very typical game, strategy game. You have uh, your wood resource, your stone resource, food resource, gold and iron, and then you have your military strength. This is quite new. Uh, this is how far or how much uh, movement your army has. And the movement your army has is dependent on its size. The bigger the army, the more shoes you have to wear out to move your army. So that's a neat system. But what's also very cool is that they have these indented board here, the tracks that uh, the tokens won't fall off from. It's uh, elevated. So these really stick in here and they will stay there as well. It's so extremely pretty. Now I got this as a review copy and from my understanding uh, these castles here, which are gorgeous by the way, just look at all those details. Uh, they are not pre-assembled when you get the game. So for me it was, so I don't know how much work is going to be assembling the game, but still, the result is quite, uh, well, you can't really match this with other games, it's like, kind of like a pre-painted miniature, so I would say it's worth the effort. The game is played in rounds, so it goes around the table, and on your turn you do all these steps here, which are identical to each player's. Oops. Now all these things happen before you actually start your turn, and these can be quite easily forget, uh, especially for new players. 
But once you have understood what these icons means, you just go through them and, uh, well, do your stuff. Then you can actually do your actions, which you can buy shoes for your army, you can build new cities, you can make a gate for your city, or upgrade the gate, or build uh, walls around the city, and build or recruit more soldiers. So those are the basic things, and here are the costs for all the things. What else you can do is you want to move around your army. So you have the line here, you move from uh, intersection to intersection, and you want to go into the animal capitals or cities and capture the resources and eventually take over the city and make it your own. And that's it, basically. Well, we could end it there and just say that it's a normal strategy game with uh, some new features and the combat is coming later. But you, what you really want is to do the expert level here and in introduce these cards here, which are based on what kind of cities you have. And then the kings, which is a stack of tiles here with the various kings with various powers and they can really alter the uh, tides of battle. These make each player's roles unique. I'm sorry, but they can also change hands or well, they can die out and become exchanged with new kings, I mean. So all is well and good, right? Well, it seems very generic, but it's far from it. You have one army figure from one thing, and that army is your only defense against the other armies. So if you leave your city with your army, well, your city is quite defenseless. And if you don't even buy, buy a wall for the city, anyone else can just walk walls in there and take it over. Except if you have walls, which have add a little protection. But still, you're very, no, you're extremely vulnerable to attack if you leave your city. So in the beginning, you cannot attack each other until uh, a player has reached a certain number of points. And then it's all open warfare for everyone. Uh, so your single army figure, it's... Ah, it's so crucial to have that close by, but still you want to expand your kingdom and buy a city where there are other resources. And it's quite hard to make that decision. So you're feeling like, okay, you're, you really want to expand your kingdom, but if you do so, you are making a, maybe a big mistake. However, if you don't do anything, you will make a bigger mistake, probably. Hmm, and that is how most of this game is going to feel like. Like you're stuck in your thoughts or stuck in the process of trying to get better. And the game is real, real punishing. You see, this isn't the game you're gonna play with your best friends. Well, they will probably be your best friends until you're done with this game. It kind of reminds of diplomacy maybe. Uh, well, you don't backstab anyone, uh, you don't make deals, but still, you do screw your friends over by doing stuff here. For instance, we have the blue capital here, represented by the big blue circle. It's empty. And if my army is strong enough, I can enter it, even though it has many towers to protect itself. I can still just enter it. And uh, if he doesn't uh, get me out by the next round, I will steal everything he has. All the wood, all the stone, all the food and gold and metal, everything. And he won't gain a bit of it when it's his turn again. So he has one chance to get back at me. And if he is over here without any food or shoes to transport your uh, army with, well, that's too bad. Maybe he can start a barter with the other players and beg for the, his help and say, oh, if you don't help me, he's going to win. But that's not entirely true either. Hmm. Still, if you lose your capital, your game is almost basically over. You can't do anything and you can't gain anything to build yourself up. Huh. Initially, you think that if you just gain control of other players, you have a chance to winning. Well, of course you have a chance of winning, because that means you get more resources. But still, you are capped at a certain amount of resource, so you can't just get everything all the time. But then, you still have other ways of scoring the game. I won this once without being in combat a single time. And that is the fault of uh, uh, the lack of players taking responsibility for other people's actions like I was sneaking up on the scores uh, just by being here with complete cities I wasn't a threat to anyone because I didn't have any army strength I just had points 
which I didn't see as a threat initially. When it came to the end though, I just had some extra scoring cards with the expert cards, those cards here, and I scored twice as many points in a round, and they suddenly they couldn't stop me because I had enough points to win the game, and I, I was too far away for anyone to do anything. So, I won by doing nothing, really. No interaction at all with other players. While I could uh, look at them fighting over each other and screaming each other over and seeing one player sitting there just sobbing because he had nothing left, because his capital was taken over, and he was like, ah, there was no way to get back here, and, well, he was right. There wasn't a way because he was stuck. His capital was taken over. Uh, he could start a new capital, but that meant two rounds, or almost, uh, that he had nothing to do and no resource gains. And that is also a thing in this game. For some reason, uh, when you set up the game, you set up the map, and the first one to place the army in an intersection, he is the first player. And that's where he gets his first city, where he puts the figure. He also gets to choose the king first, which is the power. And they are extremely unbalanced, because some are just great and some are not so good. And of course you take the best one. And you get the best location, you get the best king, and you get to start the game. So, <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, it's a mean, gruesome game. It, it really rewards the one who plays the earliest, and then he gives them more stuff to just keep on going and have this snowballing effect for a while at least. Uh, and it's really not that easy to stop him, because he's gets the strongest army, you can't stop him with your weaker army, and if you start to gang up on him, you still maybe not be able to go into his capital, because it's blocked when you don't have a strong enough army to enter the capital. Yeah, there are many things. But, what I haven't mentioned yet is the combat, and that's where things get a lot interesting. With combat, we use cards. However, I am just going to have some cards on my hand, and hold them like this. And you are going to do this. Whoop. Ah, you missed. But now I have fewer cards, so the next time you draw a card, you might... No, you still missed. You might draw my retreat card, in which case you have won the battle. But then I can still continue on the battle by reducing my army size and our strength and getting some cards back in my hand. And we start over, well, I start over again while I draw from your hand, and I could be lucky as well. So, each player will have a certain amount of cards on their hand. These are just the normal cards based on your strength, your army strength. You can have up to five of those. Then you have some that are uh, for upgrades and some are for, well, this is a retreat where you lose. Uh, this is if it's in a city, the combat that is. This is if your king is in the army. And this is if you have a certain city built. And this, I haven't really understood the difference between this and the city. But anyway, you have a certain amount of cards in your hand. And you always have to have your I give up or surrender card. So that's it. Uh, whoever is uh, going in first, I'm attacking you, so I draw from you first. If I draw this from you, the surrender, you have to either uh, uh, forfeit the battle or continue on by reducing your army strength. And we go on like this. So you shuffle the first time only, and then hold it like this, and you draw, and you draw, and you draw, and aha! And then I can get some cards back, because some of the cards have this icon. So this combat system, where you just draw from your other opponent's uh, hand, it's quite unique. And the number of cards really uh, just changes the odds of drawing that one surrender card. And I like that. Uh, it really gives the weaker opponent a chance to win at the first draw. But still, you know the odds are against you. So, the combat system is quite amusing, and it works very well. Hmm. The theme is very nice. Uh, everything, mechanically, makes sense based on what you do. Uh, and the army, <laughs> on the one army you have, also makes sense, because when you are attacking someone else, you have to leave, well, you have to leave your city defenseless, more or less. You can build a wall, but your army is there, not there and here. So it makes sense. And uh, also the other things where you gather resources and, uh, well, it makes sense thematically. Having all the variety on the map uh, and all the variety in the kings and the variety of the, the building powers, they have also cards in the expert variant, uh, 
I do see a lot of replayability here. And if you play with the same group again and again, you will make uh, this kind of group thinking where, oh, you remember when the green player did this last time? And yeah, well, I do. So let's stop him from this one. And then something else happens anyway. Uh, this is, uh, of course, a fact in all games where you play in the same group over and over again. You, you create this kind of uh, echo chamber within the group. And yeah, but this game, this game I think, will uh, really feed on that uh, ability or was it called a theme <laughs> theme no <laughs> yeah i'm lacking the english words here but i think this game is really nice for replay with the same group of people the components are really nice what i don't like are the graphics it's kind of dark with darkish icons on it and more dark uh, so when you have the game played on the table it looks fabulous fabulous but the rule book and the cover this is not something i would pick up uh, at the store it just looks very dry and very boring, but it's not. It has a lot of action in it. So I'm not a fan of the artwork, but I am a fan of the components and the, well, the total quality is very great. So I wonder who is the target audience for this game? Well, this game really, it gives the strong player the benefit every time it gives them more power and more opportunities to get more power than the one who is behind. And it also uh, awards being mean, because if I go into your capital, I will just ruin the game for you. I will get a ton of stuff myself and you won't even be able to get back on your feet if you don't have any resources. And all those things are open information, so I can just calculate, okay, well, if I attack you now, no one can stop me for the next round. So, yeah, I will do that. I have no reason not to do that. It benefits me and only me. So, yeah, it, it's it's mean. If you like mean games, then this is probably for you. Um, I like strategy games. I do like Eclipse, for instance, or Twilight Imperium, where you have a long playtime and you can make diplomacy and you can go back on these alliances. Uh, an Eclipse as well, uh, okay, sci-fi, sci-fi, um, oh, Rune Wars, the uh, board game, I enjoy that a lot. So, I have no, no thing against strategy games, uh, or oh, Civilization, Sid Meier's Civilization. Um, but this is just mean, it's mean, it's, um, well, it's not fun for me, actually. But I do really see that people can enjoy this game. What I do have problems with is the uh, unbalanced powers of the kings and uh, giving that the best powers <laughs> uh, to the, the first player or the leading player. It feels kind of off to me. Um, but I do enjoy the combat system. I do enjoy the uh, mechanisms of the game where you, everything is tight. You can only get this amount of resources and you can always get resources based on other players' the turns because... Uh, when it's your turn, you have to choose a, t a land type that will benefit resource for every player on that land type. So it's like Catan, except you don't roll the dice to determine what resource you get. So there are many things I do like about this game, which I can appreciate. But in the core essence, it's a mean game where you want to beat down the weakest players and just be more mean. So yeah, who is this for? Well, I I'm guessing diplomacy players is going to enjoy, enjoy this one. Because you are mean here as well, it's, it's just more direct and it's a lot shorter. Uh, and when you do something, you do it. You don't say you're going to do something and then do something else. It's just, that's your actions. You don't plan something verbally and then later uh, written, you do something else. So, yeah, I think maybe, or maybe Risk players who enjoy Risk and are ready for something better. <laughs> thank you so much for sticking through the video. And, uh, <laughs> well, thank you for seeing me again. Uh, it's been a while and... Uh, it's not there yet, but I'm hoping to get a bit back on track here with uh, reviews. Still, family first, and when time and uh, energy <laughs> permits, I'll see if I can get something regular again. I really want to do that. It's, uh, it's what I like to do. Okay, uh, so in case you missed it, this is for me uh, a skip, but for you, this is uh, probably worth a look. But you should hopefully have a nice impression of the game and if this, this is something for you or not by this video. If not, 
please uh, let me know in the comments what uh, I can do better, what you are missing, except for the rules, because I'm not going to do the rules for this one. It's too much for a video. Um, but yeah, thank you and um, have fun gaming or whatever you do. See ya. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.